Alright everyone, welcome or welcome back to this series where I'm fixing up this little micro apartment that is also a series about fixing up this building. Uh, if you're just jumping in here, let me show you real quick where we started with this space. And you're going to see by the end of this video that it's really starting to shape up. It's starting to look like a livable place. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. Last video there were a couple people who noticed this gap here. Um, you guys have keen eyes. Uh, yep, I've got something in store for this. We had extra space, uh, extra countertop material, and extra plywood. So I decided to make a little wine rack. That's why I like this hardware. It's so easy to do stuff. All right, there we go. Now our guests will never run out of places to store their wine. Well, I guess, unless they drink more than six bottles. I got these uh, handles to put on. Wow. Neat. All right, I had a bunch more of that leftover white oak utility glade flooring, so I made these for Sarah. We're gonna put them outside out front and put some lavender plants in them. Like, do you think it's lined up well? I might turn it that way a little. All right, so I keep forgetting to put uh, shelves in these things, so I wanna do something cool for that right now. All right, so these are two sliding uh, shelves glued up. So we're gonna run them through the table saw to cut this bit off. All right, I got this cut down. We're gonna go see if it fits now. Um, I know it's gonna fit, but we need to know how much we need to shim the sides so it can clear the door hardware and the doors when they're open. My neighbor's got their lot paved, looks great. Hey, what's going on? So when this door is open, this is proud. And it's, it's basically too proud to clear the sliding drawer. So right. now we just put this up here. No, sorry, we put it like that. <laughs> All right, I put this one in, I put it uh, a little higher than halfway up, just in case there's some bigger pots and pans that need to be stored. Got a cord down there for my mandatory island outlet, even though we got an outlet right there. But, you know, we gotta put that stuff into codes. I got this trash uh, can for the apartment and I don't think it looks good to just have trash cans sitting around so I'm gonna come up with a cool solution for that. I just spent, no exaggeration, 20 minutes looking for my GoPro. Obviously I could have filmed it with the camera I'm using right now but it becomes like a personal insult uh, for my GoPro to hide from me and I have to find it. So now I've just wasted 20 minutes. Anyway, what I was trying to film is that we are making a template to put this trash barrel on those sliding shelves over there. The plumbers abandoned this very dull, very warped hole saw, but it happened to be the perfect size for what I needed to do here. 
I found a good deal on this old Max spindle sander. It's three phase, but I bought a cheap VFD off Amazon and I was pretty quickly up and running. I don't use it much, but it's really handy for stuff like this, smoothing around the curves of patterns. All right, so we got our template here. Be a good idea to make sure that it fits. There you go. So it fits in there. It's not gonna slide through. All right, so we'll take this. Put it in there like that. All right, now we need uh, router bushings. These guys. See, that looks nice and clean. All right, we're just gonna put this in here to make sure that it fits. And then if it fits, we'll fasten everything. I think that I have two pins holding this on. It could just drop when I take these clamps off. All right, that's a good sign. There. Actually feels pretty sturdy. Might have to put something that kind of extends down here to just like brace this. Maybe make it after the fact. <laughs> Minor problem there. Need to maybe put a shim up top there or something. All right, let's uh, try this one more time. I don't know why this soft close isn't really engaging, but that looks better. All right, so the jig is in place and you know you did something wrong if when you drive the screws, um, if you don't hit a stud because the screws are lined up with where the studs are supposed to be and where you're gonna drill. All right, now I just pull this off and do the next shelf up. So I've got this slab here and it's gonna be turned into two shelves. And I... All right, we got those cut out. We're gonna go clean them up on the joiner and the table saw, get them all square and we'll round the edges and they'll be uh, really good looking shelves.
All right, I got these sanded to 120. I mean, look at that, that's just pretty. Um, you don't have to do anything fancy to that wood. You just, you just put it there and let it do its thing. All right, so I marked the center of my shelf and then I line it up with my center marking on the wall. Then I mark my center rod. Then I transfer these two markings, the center of these two markings to the back of the shelf, like so. I take my jig and I line it up the center hole with my center markings and I just place it on top. All right, the next step is I'm just gonna mark these holes but I'm not gonna drill them with this jig. And then I'm gonna transfer the center of these holes down to the bottom of the shelf, and that's so that I can find them with the dowel jig. This needs to be close to perfect, but not exactly perfect, and I'll explain why later. But we do wanna be careful not to go all the way through the shelf. All right, we're not gonna drill with our jig. We're gonna drill with the dowel jig um, because this is gonna give us perfectly centered uh, holes. All right, and you should be able to tell that that line that I transferred is centered on that hole. After you use your dowel jig, drill out the holes to the rest of their depth. It's actually easier to put the rods into the uh, shelf first um, because this is hardwood. Uh, whereas the studs are softwood and it kind of bends a little as it goes in. Okay, so do you remember when I said it needs to be perfect, but not exactly perfect? This is why. The slight inaccuracies allow a friction fit. They eliminate the need for any kind of epoxy. Um, just make sure it's how you want it before you stick it in, because you're probably never getting it off without really damaging it. All right, you got a really nice floating shelf there, blind, no fasteners showing, and it's good and sturdy. Put the cooler side where you can see it, assuming you're the same height as me. There we go. Got that in there. All the way. I got a lot of really good ideas from viewers um, for how to handle this space, but I actually decided to use this tile, um, which is the same tile I'm gonna use back there. Uh, so it should tie things together nicely and add some color to this room, which right now is just kind of wood and, and white. And then I uh, trimmed out the corner of the cabinet and left this proud here to trim out the edge of the tile. So I'm just gonna put a spacer down here so that the tile doesn't sit and cover like half of the top of the trim. I got this final template built and then um, I got one more little template here to the edge and they got my helper with me and my other helper who's not going to be on camera all right so I used this template right here that's in place um, to make this piece down here I don't think I ever showed you guys what the underside looks like um, so all this stuff is beveled and that just makes it go in easier. Uh, you can kind of slam it against the wall. Get this template out of here. So, 
Na pele. This, that looks pretty good. And just got this one section right here left. I am gonna probably have to smash this in. So this template here, I'm just gonna take it and move it onto this tile that I've laid out. What I've done is marked a center on my template, top and bottom, and lined the center tile. And I've got, you know, an equal length cut off on either side. Um, the only really minor issue is there's a sliver right here, which should be covered by the outlet plate. So this is about as good as we're gonna do for a layout. All right, I got all this trim painted. Focus. Focus. There we go. All right, I think this is a good time to stop, guys. This is looking really good. I'm super excited about this. Um, let me show you. All right, well, of course, we got that trim put in, and we got the rest of this knee wall top made. Um, gonna be honest, guys, got a little gap here. Sometimes it happens, you just put a, put a flower pot on it or a, or a camera lens. There you go, all good. Um, and then, of course, we got that tile in there. I, I really like that bit of color. I think it's cool. I realize that's gonna be controversial. Um, the color that we painted the, uh, the trim is called Alabaster, and I basically just Googled good accent colors for, um, no, sorry, it's called Iron Ore, and I Googled good accent colors for Alabaster. Uh, I really like it. I think it looks good with the brick, and it looks good with the Alabaster. Um, of course, we got the floating shelves put up. Did this little backsplash here. Um, and we got this really awesome looking uh, ambrosia maple. Um, it just looks really cool. Um, and then we, uh, we, we finally managed to solve the shelf issue. Um, so we got these. Nice little feature. And then you got your hidden trash. Which I, I, I had that in my kitchen, thought it was cool. So I like it. And uh, I tidied everything up a little bit. So place is looking a little cleaner. And yeah, I mean, it, it looks, like a, looks like a livable space almost. So I've got to cut down the door for this closet and paint it. 
And then I've still got to do the entire bathroom, make a sliding door, it won't be as hard. It doesn't have to be frame and panel for that. And then just do the rest of this trim and get, get furniture in it. Uh, I painted the door, I don't think I filmed that, but painted the door, got to make trim for that. Um, the old trim is all going to be painted and the new trim is going to be this uh, Hackberry. Yeah, and since I got it here, I guess I'll show you. We're gonna have uh, like two or three of these chairs here. I got more of them downstairs, so it'll be a nice little eating area. All right, everyone, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I wanna thank you guys who keep coming back every time I put a video up. I really appreciate it. I wanna thank my Patreon members. I also wanna thank whoever bought one of these combos. Someone bought one. I'm one for one on, uh, on affiliates. I'm an affiliate for Pioneer. Someone, one person bought a Pioneer. One person bought one of these. Thank you, it was awesome. Um, but anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.